Recording audio. There are several ways to record audio. The fastest is to select your track, select the input, which is in this case the Sigma Tel Audio 1, which is my sound card. Also, make sure you check the master because if there is nothing selected here, there will be a conflict. So choose this as well, come back to your track, and then click the one click audio recording button. Now I actually don't have anything connected to the input of this, but you'll see that the time is moving, the record is armed, and when I push stop and go to my playlist, that the master track and the insert are both sent into the playlist as clips. Now I can simply also come here at any point in the song, do the same thing, and it will begin recording right there. If I push stop, you'll see that the clip is now put at that place that I started. Very smart about this. You can also record straight into the Edison editor, which is described in the following movies. They do a great job describing the editor and show how things work in it, so I'm not going to talk about it here. But keep in mind that the Edison editor is a great place to record, edit, and work with audio. However, at this time, I want to go over some practical advice about recording. Especially if you've never done it before, or if you've done it without any formal training, this is a good kind of primer for recording audio. First, watch your levels. With digital audio, especially high quality 24-bit audio, it is okay to record at slightly lower levels. Do not be afraid to avoid super hot levels. Now for a number of years, everyone has said, you know, with digital audio and analog, you need to pump it up, record it as hot as you can. That's not necessarily the case. Because in digital audio, if your audio is clipped, which is to say that it reaches the loudest level possible and stays there for a number of consecutive samples, then any pitch and dynamic range is obliterated and you can never get it back. Second, take care to record what you want the first time. It is very hard to fix a poor recording in the mixing or mastering process. The reason for this is that your recording can only be as good as the sound you get when you record. Try to start off with the best possible recording that you can. Don't let it be the weakest link. Third, there is a point of diminishing returns. You can only record something a certain amount of times before it gets stale and unmusical. If you don't get the perfect take right away, then take some time away or try something else and then come back later for a fresh approach. You can keep on beating it into the ground, but it usually doesn't help. Plus, getting a good recording is almost always better than piecing something together later in Edison. It just isn't the same as getting a good take. Okay, let's move on to the next movies.